2020 is coming to a close and it's been a terrible year for almost everyone. But luckily for us, there were a lot of AWS service announcements that have taken place over the past year, especially with reInvent just a few months ago. So I wanted to take a few minutes just to talk about the top five trending AWS services that I can see in 2021. Uh, so let's just jump right into it and start off with our top five list. So the first one that I'm most excited about is Aurora Serverless. If you would have asked me just three months ago what I thought about Aurora Serverless, I probably would have told you to avoid it. Not because it's a bad service, but just because it suffered from a painful problem called cold start. Now cold start is the issue where if you have a period of prolonged inactivity on your database, then there's no machines that are available to receive any requests. This means that if a request does come in, serverless needs to find an EC2 instance to provision, load up that database onto that machine, and then finally make it available to you. This means that your first request after a period of an activity could take sometimes up to one minute, which is ridiculously long and something that people can't tolerate for tier one applications. Now with reInvent 2021, the Aurora team has finally announced that this is no longer a problem. The cold start problem is now solved. So what this means for you is that serverless is now a viable option for those of you that are looking to use um, MySQL or Postgres in a serverless fashion. And it's going to be great for everyone that's looking to reduce costs. You don't need to keep your databases up and running during the evening when no one is using it. So for this reason, I think Aurora Serverless is definitely going to be something that I want to learn more about, and it's going to really shine in 2021. So that's number one, it's Aurora Serverless. And number two is Lambda. Now, if you've watched this channel before, you probably know that I'm a pretty big fan of Lambda, but this was not always the case. Just a few years ago, I would say that the serverless compute option was a little bit immature and required a little bit more time in order to develop itself. Now I can honestly say that using Lambda is a lot easier than using something like ECS or uh, EC2s, it's a lot easier to use, it's more reliable, it's got a lot of tuning, monitoring, uh, tools that are available to you to optimize cost, it has longer timeouts now so you can use longer running jobs, and I truly do think that going forward, uh, serverless is going to be a very popular choice for a lot of developers that are looking to get their applications up and running very, very quickly. It's also very reasonable to use for large scale systems in the order of hundreds, if not thousands of transactions per second. Uh, in my own personal experience, I've noticed that Lambda is able to scale accordingly and performs pretty well under load. Um, so for that reason, I think uh, Lambda is going to be very, very popular in 2021 and beyond. And kind of along the same vein, number three is ECS, which stands for Elastic Container Store. Now, for those of you that are uh, more into Docker and the advantages that it gives you, you'll be happy to know that there's a lot of improvements that have come into ECS as part of reInvent 2020. And especially with Fargate now, which is the serverless option to use ECS, you don't need to have EC2 machines. You don't need to worry about spinning up EC2 machines and maintaining them, patching them, so on and so forth. A lot of companies are using Docker in 2020, and I don't expect that to change at all in 2021. Now, the fourth service is kind of a two-in-one, which is CloudFormation and CDK. Now, these two services in combination allow you to define infrastructure as code. If you've never heard about infrastructure as code, you need to learn it right now. Infrastructure as code is where the industry is going as an option to create your resources, to create your infrastructure. It allows you to define it through code and deploy that to multiple different regions so that you can easily replicate it from region to region. Uh, it's also got a whole bunch of other benefits, which I have an entire video on that you should check out. But Cloud CloudFormation essentially lets you define your resources using either YAML or JSON, and CDK is an improvement on CloudFormation where you can define your resources using regular code. So I believe it supports like TypeScript, Scala, uh, Java, and a bunch of other languages that they're constantly adding. Now using CDK now, you can take advantage of many programming constructs that are useful, such as loops and functions and everything, so that you can make it a lot easier to define your infrastructure. Like I said, infrastructure as code is not going away. It's getting more and more popular. And these are the two AWS services that you need to know about if you're going to be using infrastructure as code on AWS. And the final service that I'm excited about, and I think is going to be making some splashes in 2021, is AWS EventBridge. EventBridge is pretty similar to SNS, which stands for Simple Notification Service, but allows you to hook into a lot of external data service providers, such as like PagerDuty, um, so that you can ingest events into your AWS ecosystem and react to them. 
Uh, so for instance, you can do things like hook up event bridge to auto scaling events and then choose a target on where you want to send that event, maybe to a Lambda function so it can wake up and perform some job. There's hundreds of AWS service integration points that you can use with EventBridge. Uh, so you can hook into all sorts of different events that exist in the AWS ecosystem and react to them accordingly. So these are the five services that I'm most excited about going into 2021. I love to hear what you think down below in the comments section of what you are most excited about. And as always, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.